Another question, uh, this question is about forgiveness. How can someone professing being a Christian, uh, but they can't find in their heart to forgive others? After, after your sermon, this person writes on loving others recently, loving others as ourselves. Knowing the answer to this is really important to me, the writer, writer puts here. And, and the writer says, and if this person is a leader in the church, isn't this even more important? So about forgiveness, how can someone as a professing Christian not find it in their hearts to forgive others? Yeah. Well, the, the answer is simply, it's because they're human. <laughs> I mean, we all struggle with forgiveness. Um, and so the, the challenge for all of us is to, again, back to who's really Lord of our lives. And that's, am I surrendering all things to God? Am I letting go of my anger, my hate, my frustration, my hurts even, and giving those to God? And, and we've been doing a sermon series about surrendering our emotions to God. And that doesn't mean our emotions aren't wrong. It just means that, that eventually we got to say, Lord, I want you to be in charge of these emotions, and therefore I want to have the right reaction. Uh, and so, again, when we talk in the broadest sense, just about being able to forgive someone, uh, the first thing we need to do is acknowledge that we got hurt. I think too often in our culture, we, we don't do that piece. Like, I got hurt really bad, and just... All right, now why did I get hurt? Why did that bother me? Why, man, this is, what what other past experience have I, has, have I had that, that ripped the scab off of? And, and so now I got to do the work of even going back into my, you know, childhood sometimes and saying, that hurts so bad now, even though maybe it was a little thing because it actually ripped the scab off of all these events. And so I think too often we almost forgive too quickly. Now, I don't mean that we shouldn't, forgive quickly, but rather we haven't given any thought to, I forgive you, and instead of doing the homework and saying, have I healed any of this stuff, we're just, yeah, no big deal. Real forgiveness is, I had to walk through all this, I, I drug it up, I didn't want to drag it up, but that's why it hurt me, because you drug it up for me, you forced me to live into it, but now I'm able to move into a healing state with God, and that's why the surrendering of the emotions is so uh, powerful is because this is where God is saying, oh, good, I've been wanting to heal us for years. Uh, you just weren't aware that you were still dragging around all this pain. Again, it wasn't bleeding, so you didn't think you needed any triage, but it's actually just been this festering wound all the way back here. Now I want to bring healing to that. So step one is, well, why, why did that hurt? And acknowledging the hurt, uh, or else we never really get to move into true forgiveness. I think we just kind of move into a a, a kind of a lackadaisical, no big deal. State. Yeah, whatever, no big deal. But then we miss out on the transformative power of God, what the Holy Spirit wants to do within us. So Aaron, what I think I hear you saying is, um, in order to get to a place of true forgiveness, there is a healing process that you really need to go through. Yeah. Maybe a little like the grieving process when somebody dies. Absolutely. It, Absolutely. Is, it is a process. It's not overnight. It's oftentimes hard work. It can be very painful. But yet, when you when you get to that place where you've grieved and you understand that the world is different now, that person is gone, and with forgiveness, you understand to the extent we humanly can that we went through that process, we've arrived at a at a healthier place. Um, but it but it is a process, right? Okay. Yeah, and, and as you talked about the process, this is where sometimes I remind people and myself that. Sometimes what you're forgiving people for, it wasn't like a, okay, I did it and now we're done and it's easy. Uh, especially if they haven't repented and, and kind of said, hey, I'm changing my ways and then I stop, stop causing that harm. Sometimes it's a, I'm forgiving you again. Yeah, yeah. And then an hour later, I'm forgiving you again. And again, not letting it turn into anger, but turn into something that you surrender to God on a regular basis. And fully acknowledging the hurt, fully... I say this to people, I say, I think God is more interested in us embracing the pain than forgetting about it or moving on. He wants us to embrace it because the only way to heal it is to embrace it. And so again, embrace the pain, heal, give forgiveness again and again and again and again. The, the piece that I would remind here is there's a difference between forgiveness and forgetting. Yeah. And forgiveness is you no longer have power over me. 
I've surrendered my emotion and my reaction to God and then said to God, what is the proper reaction to the situation? Because sometimes it is like an anger thing. That, that's, that's how many great movements, anti-slavery movements started. That's how uh, movements against racism started. People were angry and they gave it to God and then came back to the Holy Spirit saying, yeah, I'm upset with this too. Let's go fix it, right? Yeah, we own Wilmer Force. Anyway, right. With the end of slavery. Uh, forgetting is... I'm going to allow you to harm me over and over and over again. And I'm not going to do anything to change the circumstances. I'm not going to change any of the boundaries or borders. I'm just going to continue to be a victim. And nowhere in scripture does it suggest we live a life of forgetfulness, but rather forgiveness. And forgiveness does not mean going back and putting yourself in a vulnerable situation right. to be harmed again. Right. It's about you can forgive there generally is going to be a boundary. Right. And again, it's about whoever has offended doesn't have power over me. And that, that feeling, again, that's why that homework of healing that's so important because that doesn't have power over me either. Why? Because there's only one Lord in my life and it's not my anger. It's not those wounds. It's not that past experience. It's God. So again, often forgiveness is a, a bigger job than what uh, we want to imagine it to be. And in that, then, how amazing is the work done by Jesus on the cross that he's able to say, and I forgive you. Or as he's looking at those who are making fun of him and harming him while he's on the cross, he's like, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. And I read that and I'm like, wow. wow. I could just, okay, the fact that you can do that, because I would not have done it. Like, right. When I get back, dad's going to kick your butt, right? And Jesus is like, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. And, and, and we're the recipients of that grace. And this is why Jesus says, hey, be careful. Whatever you don't forgive people of, whatever measure you use to measure people by, I'll in turn use that on you. And it's one of those scary passages where like, Jesus was like, look, I forgave you. Therefore, forgive others. And if you're not going to forgive others, be careful because what you're inviting me to do is to say, yeah, you're so self-righteous. You're now taking my place. Uh, but rather, I want to look and go, I, I, I'd say to people, I lose my boat, right? Jesus forgave, I, I lost my boat. It doesn't mean I don't do the homework and all the stuff I got to do to forgive, but do I have to forgive? Yes, because I lost my boat, because Jesus is Lord. Yes.